what I want to do is to uh, move into uh, kind of a long thing. It's uh, the Reformation and the English Revolution, um, but it's going to be important for understanding Ducell, which is our big focus in the last three weeks of class. Uh, so let me jump into it. I have a introductory, um, an introductory sort of section that I'll do in this video, and then and then we'll move on to the other sections. And let me make this a little bigger. All right, so I want to talk about themes. And I'm, obviously, I'm trying out a little bit of a different format from what you've seen before. So I'm experimenting with that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, themes in this, in this, uh, this series of lectures on the Reformation and the English Revolution. Um, so, uh, and when I say, uh, and so I have it entitled Reformation and the Birth of the Modern Nation State. Um, in other presentations, we might, think of the nation state quite differently than the way that I'm going to present it here, but I'm presenting it from an uh, uh, English perspective, from the perspective of England. And we'll see how that just sort of flows into what I want to talk later on and, and actually leads right into uh, explaining Marx a little bit. You got to read the Communist Manifesto, hopefully. Um, if not, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about it in this section of the course. Uh, because these are things that come up and do sell. And I just want to make sure that some of this, you know, some of this stuff is kind of high end stuff that's a little bit above our, uh, over our heads. But, um, but, you know, you gotta, you gotta jump in someplace. And so uh, I want to just try to make that that jump into the deep end of what Duzel's talking about, which gets pretty sophisticated for one thing you know authors writing so he's writing in the 21st century uh just a few we're going to look at a book that he wrote just a few years ago so then he's referencing all this stuff from the 20th century all these different um, philosophers and their different takes on things and all these sort of conventions of historicism of, of history and and conventions of philosophy and he wants to totally rewrite that story and so i kind of want to give you the standard story in a way but a standard story that dovetails nicely into what Dussel has to say so we're going to use a, a eurocentric perspective which Dussel is arguing against you know that's the thing that he's arguing against but i want to give you a sense of what that is and um and then it's also an anglo dutch perspective so not just Euro european centric but really from a english perspective but but that english perspective then is tied in very closely with the dutch perspective from the netherlands uh, of northern europe <clears throat> and and that's part of the big story that I want to uh, unfold here. And this is a long story, and, and, but this is sort of a thing within uh, Marxist uh, history and, and the Marxist study of history is this notion of the long durée, the, the, the long duration, looking at things over long periods of time and not getting caught up too much in particular events as if one event changes everything. Like there's kind of a pattern that, that emerges over long periods of time. And the events, you know, it's hard to say which is the big, you know, which events are the big turning points. And that's part of telling the big story, but we always wanna step back and see the big picture and not, not hang too much on one particular event it's really those changes over centuries um, that gives us a good sense of what's going on. Um, 
and, and this is a big part of Marxism and the criticism that Dussel is going to make of Marxism. He's criticizing Marxism in its notion of the historical or the arc of history, let's say, in this long durée kind of way of thinking. Uh, but Dussel is talking, you know, very much from the, the, from the same long durée perspective. He just has a different way of telling the story from the Marxist that's somewhat different, not entirely different. Okay, so, um, so I wanna, and, and you know, he doesn't, he doesn't go into the Marxist notions here. He's just criticizing them, assuming that you know what they are. So that's what I'm trying to fill in that gap. <clears throat> okay, so it's a, we have an eye towards Dussel um, and, I want to cover the history of modern philosophy uh, coming up next. And I want to get a little bit more specific about Marx uh, in ways that are relevant to Dussel's uh, criticism. And, um, and, and, and I want to be thinking about class warfare. And so a lot of what this series of lectures is about is the notion of class warfare and um, and seeing that from a, a, a Marxist perspective, maybe not an orthodox Marxist perspective, as I said before, I'm not an orthodox Marxist, but um, you know, in this critical Marxist sort of way where you're engaging with what Marxism has to say, but, but, but tweaking things. And then you know, I have a kind of tweak, but it's still very Eurocentric, Euro-Anglo-centric, uh, but then Dussel wants to tweak it even more. And, and, and that's what I wanna bring out and in, 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 in do some lectures on Dussel and, sh and sort of walk you through the text, uh, at least through a few chapters uh, of the book and uh, help you to understand that. And, that. and then that's quite interesting. You know, he has a, a really interesting take on things. That's, that is fresh, you know, it's a fresh perspective, it's nice. And it's not just like, uh, it's not just, uh, being creative, it's like really thoughtful and 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 thinking about things in this long durée perspective uh, that is quite interesting. But we have to know all this long history to even begin to understand what Dussel is talking about. And and again, he doesn't go into the stuff that you're already supposed to know. He just emphasizes the things that he wants to add in so that it changes the whole big picture. Okay, um, and, and remember that Dussel is, is his unique perspective is from what he calls uh, the periphery uh, in the world economy where the United States is like the center of the uh, global imperialist capitalism and places like Mexico where he works now and Argentina, uh, or, or was it Brazil? Like now I can't remember where he was born. Um, I think Brazil. Uh, he uh, he wants to think about these places as the periphery and as his perspective being from the per periphery, being sort of on the borderline between the between being on the outs, like the poor that Father Romero was concerned about, and being on the inside. Uh, as an intellectual who has been educated in the European, European sort of tradition, and then use that perspective to criticize Eurocentric philosophy and uh, try to uh, reform philosophy, it's sort of in the way that, that the Protestant uh, reformers wanted to reform Christianity. Uh, that we're going to talk about here. All right, and so then um, I wanted to start out with this quote from Machiavelli. So he says, uh, all states, all powers that have held and hold rule over men have been and are either republics or principalities. Uh, and that's The Prince, uh, his most famous book. And that's the very first sentence of the book. 
Uh, so either you have a republic or you have a principality. And a principality is like a monarchy, maybe even on a small scale, like in terms of a city being a state unto itself. A small scale would be a principality with one absolute leader. Or you have a republic. And the republic is like the alternative to that. And, and what is a republic? Okay, the English version that I'm going to share with you is not the classic version, but it is a kind of version of a republic. But then, as we know, there's still a Queen of England. So how is England a republic if it has a queen? Well, the queen is not, um, is not uh, a prince in Machiavelli's sense. And so I want to, I want to unpack that and show you uh, what we mean there. And in the course of it, especially by way of uh, the Netherlands and the history there, um, I'll try to bring out what is more traditionally meant by a republic. And you'll see that these two stories uh, really converge. So um, we have the Netherlands on the one hand and we have England on the other hand, and we're sort of looking at it from the perspective of England, okay. Uh, all right, so I, I just wanted to stop this video right there, and then I'll, I'll make a new video for the next section.